next talk, uh, we have Callum Grindle uh, speaking about gasless dabs from Luxo. Give him a warm welcome, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Sounds good. Cool. Thanks. So I hope you're all enjoying the first day of uh, ETH Warsaw today. It's nice to be here. Um, yeah, my name is Callum. I'm a software engineer at um, Luxo Blockchain. Um, that's me, <laughs> if you didn't recognize. This QR code is my link tree with uh, links to like Telegram, GitHub, stuff like that. I'm also here in person, um, which is probably easier. Um, that's my uh, GitHub there, which is some projects pinned if you want to check that out at a later date. Um, so to just set the agenda for the talk, um, the talk is on building gasless um, dApps with universal profiles. So to start, I'll give some context on what universal profiles are, what Luxo is, um, just some background so we know what we're talking about. Um, the problem which we're trying to solve, um, which this talk is about, namely that there are transaction fees which block new users from using blockchain technology. Um, and then the solution, so we'll talk about how universal profiles can solve this and then go on to talk about what you can do next. Um, so for some background on um, Luxo, Luxo is a new layer one EVM blockchain. Um, the idea of the blockchain is it's focused on the new creative economies, so improving the user experience of blockchain technologies um, to onboard the next billion users that's what, <laughs> um, that are not familiar with this technology and have not necessarily used it before. before. So um, to achieve that, we've developed a suite of um, user, ex user experience focused smart contracts. And we call these uh, standards LSPs, which is Luxo standard proposal. So similar to ERC, e Ethereum request for comments, but this is Luxo's version of that. And these we think of as the, the building blocks for the new creative economies. So these are individual smart contract standards which you can build up in new ways to create more sophisticated smart contract applications and um, focused around these social and creative use cases. So <laughs> I added this, it's turtles all the way down. Um, this, is, this is taken from a, an anecdote from at the start of Stephen Hawking's book, A Brief History of Time, and he tells the story of a, a lecturer who's giving a presentation on the nature of the universe and the cosmos, and someone at the back of the room puts their hand up and says, um, everyone knows that the, the world is just riding on the back of a giant turtle. And uh, the lecturer responds, okay, interesting, but if that's the case, what's underneath that turtle? And the person responds, well, of course, it's just turtles all the way down. And this isn't a turtle conference, we're talking about blockchain here. So, in this case, it's uh, uh, LSPs all the way down. The idea being that we have um, smart contract standards that are built on top of other smart contract standards, and these combine in interesting ways to give us new um, and sophisticated smart contract applications. Um, and our sort of flagship product is what we call universal profiles. A universal profile is a smart contract based account. Um, this is different to uh, like a MetaMask um, EOA key. It's a full, fully functioning smart contract account system that comes with um, a bunch of features. I can have profile pictures, uh, usernames, all of the kind of features that we're used to from a Web2 experience like Facebook and Twitter, but now coming to the blockchain and actually coming from like a, a native um, experience. So the universal profile is composed of um, two different smart contract standards, which is LSP0. LSP0 is the face of your smart contract. This is the part which has the, the profile metadata. Um, and then there's a key manager. And the key manager is a fully upgradable permission system. So you can have um, scoped keys which control different aspects of your universal profile. Um, and these two things together uh, create a universal profile. And it's a, to make this as easy as possible for our users, um, at Luxo we've developed our own browser extension, and this is uh, similar to MetaMask or any of the other browser extensions, but this will be used uh, actually to control a smart contract um, account or the universal profile. So you can see here I have the profile picture, username. This just looks like a Web2 profile, but this is all coming from chain. So it means when you connect to dApps with your universal profiles, all of this can be read from the smart contract and decoded, and you can have a much more seamless um, user-friendly experience. So that's uh, some background of what, what we're talking about. And the problem we're focusing on here is that before using any decentralized applications, users first need native tokens to be able to do anything on the blockchain. Any state change on the blockchain requires, um, requires paying gas fees. And to pay the gas fees, users need um, some tokens to be able to pay for them. And just to illustrate why this is an issue, um, just to I'll raise this scenario. Um, imagine you are a DApp developer and you want to go to market with your new application. It's a really cool application. It's the best DApp that's ever existed. 
So you go to market and expect that you're going to get loads of users. This is what you expect. The users can see it and say, hey, this is cool the app. I want to start using it. And then they can start using it. But the reality is more like this, where a user can see that your DApp is cool and come and try to use it, but immediately they can't use it because they don't have the fees or they don't have the tokens um, to be able to pay for the gas fees. So they then need to go away to a centralized exchange like Binance, input their credit card details, buy the tokens, transfer them back to a wallet, and only then can they actually use your application. And the question I want to sort of put forward is like, how many users do you think you lost in those steps between one and seven? And I'm going to assume that it, it's a lot. And the point being that um, it's it, the blockchain technology is in, we're limiting ourselves um, just to those users who are already in the club. Those users who have already gone through those steps are the only ones which can actually use blockchain-based applications. New users who just see your application and want to start using it are immediately turned off and are blocked because they can't. They, can't, um, they don't, can't pay for the gas fees. So this is what we want to get back to, where a user can see your application, say, hey, this is cool. I want to start playing with this, and then just be able to start using it. So uh, well, one way that we can solve this is uh, using these universal profiles. This is a smart contract-based account system. And these can actually execute gasless transactions. So using a universal profile, your users can come to your DApp and just start playing with it immediately without having to divert away to Binance or some centralized exchange, buy the tokens and transfer them. People can immediately just start messing about with blockchain technology. And the way this works is um, using relay transactions. So the universal profiles come with relay transactions out the box. It's already ready um, and works. And just to illustrate the flow of how it, how it sort of works under the hood is a user signs some transaction. So there's some transaction or some action the user wants to perform on the blockchain. It might be minting an NFT. It might be uploading, uh, like changing a profile picture on their universal profile or sending some tokens to a friend. A any action, any state change on the blockchain requires some gas fees to be paid. So that's the action the want user wants to perform. And what they can do is they're able to sign this transaction, and it's signed in such a way that it can actually be relayed to a third party, and that third party is then able to pay for the gas fees. Because the, the signature and the payload was given to this third party, it's the third party which is executing the transaction. Therefore, it's the third party which pays for the gas fees. And this enables a whole new use case of applications, which we call transaction relay services. This is just um, a service which is this third party relayer. This is, the, this is the party who is actually interacting with the blockchain to execute the transactions for the universal profile users. And this works and is enabled by this function here. This is called execute relay call. This is a function on, on the universal profile. So on the user's universal profile, this is available. This, I mean, this is just a a smart contract function, so it's available for anyone to call. That means that anyone is able to create a transaction relay service. It's entirely open and accessible to anyone who wants to build this, is, and they can. So this, I mean, there's four parameters here in this function. I'm just going to focus on these two um, for this. It's just the signature and the payload. So the payload is the content of the transaction, which I talked about. That's the action the user wants to perform. So that's the, the message that says, hey, I want to mint this NFT. And the signature is just that payload signed to prove that it is the user who is executing that action. So to illustrate it again, the user has some action they want to perform. There's the payload of the transaction. They package that up in such a way that it can be sent to a relay service, and that's the signature. So the act of signing it acts as like packaging it up into an envelope so it can then be sent on to a relay service. And that relay service is then able to call this execute relay call function on the, on the universal profile, and that's when it gets dispatched to the blockchain. And all of this is actually abstracted away from the user entirely. So the user doesn't know any of this is really happening. Um, the browser extension that we've built handles all of this signing and relaying to the, to the relay service um, natively and out of the box. So to just show you what, what this would look like, um, this is the transaction confirmation window in our browser extension. Um, I just highlight here in red what we sort of want to look at. So you see on the left, there's this um, terminology of a quota. This is a concept which we've sort of come up with, where we think that these transaction relay services will behave uh, similarly to like a mobile phone contract. 
or an internet service provider where you pay per month and you get some amount of data that you can use for that full month. And as you go through the month, you use some up. So here I've used 75,000 out of 40 million gas, and then it resets um, at the start of the month. And within the browser extension, this, this drop down here, this is actually where you're able to select which transactions a relay service you want to use. As I said, anyone is able to run a transaction relay service. It's entirely open and permissionless. Anyone can do it. Um, but you, within the browser extension, the user can choose which one they want to use. And you can see here that the, the last option, the controller key, is actually disabled. And that's because the user has no tokens. So the user is still able to confirm a transaction here and send a transaction, even though they have no tokens available. And that's only because the relay services are doing that gas payment for you. So as I said, anyone is able to create these relay services. To actually make them compatible with the browser extension, they need to follow some sort of rule set. There needs to be a common interface which all relay services adhere to because the browser extension needs to know the correct format of the message sending to the third party relay service. So it needs to have the correct API structure. So as I said at the start, we have uh, standards built on top of standards. So this is uh, another standard we've developed called LSB15. This is the Transaction Relay Service API. So this is the standard that all transaction relay services should meet. So it's, I mean, it's a simple interface. It's a post request to a root slash execute, and it returns a transaction hash. And in the body of that um, payload, we're just sending the address, which is the universal profile address, and then the transaction parameters. And if you notice, these four parameters inside the transaction exactly correspond to what is going to be passed inside execute relay call. So here, there's the ABI and the signature. The ABI is just the payload. Again, that's the content of the action the user wants to perform. So the ABI is where you have the instruction to mint this NFT, send this token, or change this data key, whatever it might be. And the signature is just that message signed to prove that this address wants to execute this task. And this is all sent to the relay service. And the relay service then just inputs these parameters into the execute relay call method on the universal profile. So the user calls the slash execute on the transaction relay service. The relay service passes that. Into the, into the smart contract. So um, that's, I threw quite a lot at you. <laughs> so you might be thinking, well, OK, that sounds like a lot that I need to do to change in my code to make this work. Um, so you're thinking, well, like, what do I need to do in my D app to make it gasless? And the answer is nothing. All of this is handled within the browser extension. There, there is nothing. If you want to just run your D app and benefit from um, transaction relay services, you, you, you can do, um, because there's nothing else that needs to be done. Um, so for instance, if you wanted to, within your D app, you were sending a transaction, you just use the exact same RPC method that you'd be using, whether it was MetaMask or any of the other wallets or the Universal Profile Browser Extension. So using the smart contract account system, is no different to using MetaMask. The dApps that you already have and have already built with, um, to be used with MetaMask, they're entirely compatible with Universal Profiles, except the Universal Profile is able to execute these transactions for, for free without paying any gas. I know the browser extension handles all of this. Yeah, so as I said, it's, all of the dApps are compatible with Universal Profiles and externally owned accounts without any code changes necessary. So the dApps you've already have built benefit from transaction relay services immediately without you changing anything in the dApp. Although, if you wanted to just deploy your, um, have your dApp and benefit from the transaction relay services which exist, you would then be assuming that there is someone else somewhere running a transaction relay service which your users can use. And you might actually want to guarantee your users a gasless experience. And to do that, you could run your own transaction relay service, which is specifically for your dApp. The idea being that you set aside some amount of tokens and say, hey, I want to set aside these tokens and see it as a kind of loss leader where you, you pay for your users uh, gas in the hope that they have a much smoother experience and are then able to onboard a lot more users. So it ends up being worth your time to do that if you want to run a transaction relay service for your application. So if you did want to do that, these, <laughs> these would be the steps that you'd have to, to implement. So the first thing is the LSP15, that's the transaction relay service API, which I 
uh, showed earlier. So that's the common interface that all of these transaction relay services should, should adhere to. And then you would need to implement a transaction relay service um, which takes those parameters received from the, uh, the execute endpoints from the LSP15 API standard and passes those parameters into the execute relay call function. And this third part here, this is new, I haven't mentioned this before. We, the browser extension, the universal profile browser extension, actually has a custom RPC method. So you can dynamically add a transaction relay service into the browser extension without having to require your users copy and pasting links and pasting them into the browser extension back and forward, which means it's a lot, a lot, a lot smoother. And um, I'll demonstrate this in a minute, so it'll probably make more sense. Um, and it's not as complicated as it maybe seems, but. This is, this is what it looks like where you say UP adds transaction relay service. You're telling the browser extension I want to add this, this specific relay service um, and you pass the name of it, the URL which the browser extension should call to pass on the transaction parameters and the chain IDs of the networks that your relay service works with. So here is 42 which is the Luxo mainnet. And then once you do that, this RPC call will trigger this uh, transaction window, oh, not a transaction window, sorry, but this confirmation window where the user um, is asked to confirm whether they want to add transaction relay service into the browser extension. And they need to confirm which universal profiles they want to add that relay service with. So um, that was a lot of information. Um, I'll, I've got like a, a video of this also kind of working and what what the user would see, and you'll see it's uh, much less than what I've <laughs> shown you. Um, but just some things to sort of uh, highlight and pay attention to. So you'll see that the user, well, this dApp is a is a, a universal profile name updater. So it's just a simple dApp with one form input. The user can change the username of their universal profile. And you see the user connects with the dApp. The dApp then is able to dynamically pull in the, the profile picture and the metadata of that universal profile straight from the smart contract itself. And then we'll call this um, custom RPC method to add the transaction relay service into the browser extension. And we'll see the user executing a gasless transaction and that the username updates correctly. So. So first the user connects the universal profile and they need to select which universal profile they want to connect with. So there it pulls in the metadata. I enter my new username that I want to update to and hit update username. And this now triggers the add custom transaction relay service RPC call, um, which I mentioned. So this now is adding this relayer that is in the background going to execute this transaction for the user. So the user now selects which relayer they want to use. In the future, this, this will be default. The user won't have to manually select this drop down. It will default to the most, the most recent one that was called with add relayer. And then the user sends the transaction. You should be able to see that the, the username updates inside the extension. So all of that that the user just did, all of that was gasless. There was no gas pays, paid by the user there. The gas was paid by the, the organization that was running this dApp. The idea, idea being that it creates a much more seamless experience for the, the users of this dApp. So this is what we wanted to get back to, um, the sort of uh, the flow where users can just see a cool dApp, see a cool application on the blockchain and start using it without having to worry about all of the prerequisite stuff that we usually need to worry about to use blockchain technology. So if you want to start read it, um, if you want to start playing around with this stuff, uh, you can read our documentation. As a QR code for the docs. There, there is a section in the documentation about this Relayer API standard I have. Um, I'll, take, I'll take questions in just two minutes. Um, if you want to read more about the API standard, and um, this repo here, this is on my, um, it's on the Luxo uh, Networks uh, GitHub um, organization. And it's uh, basically a mock a relayer repository. And it shows you how, how you can actually build your own relayer. And you see it's, there's really not that much involved. It's just implementing this um, API standard. Um, and it shows you how you can pass the parameters that are sent to the API into the, the, the smart contract call. So you can, you can clone this and rip it apart, do what you want with it. But the idea is you play around with it and um, start integrating this. Um, so I see how I'm for time. Yeah. 
Good, thanks. Um, yeah, so I'm going to preempt a question. The account abstraction, ERC4337, is a big topic at all of the conferences, um, the Ethereum conferences at the moment. Um, you see here there's already lots of talks about ERC4337. So the question is, like, how, how is this execute relay call stuff, this gas abstraction, different from ERC4337? And just to do a very brief, brief summary, I made up this um, table where both of these, execute relay call, which I discussed now, and ERC4337, these are both gas abstraction solutions. So both of these solutions end up with users having a gasless experience. And both of these are also compatible with universal profiles. So whether you want to have um, a specific relayer application which you use with your universal profile, or set up your universal profile so that it works with ERC4337, both of those work. It's just up to you. Um, in terms of how these are implemented, the ERC4333, uh, sorry, execute relay call is just implemented with one function. There's just one function call which gives you this, uh, gives you this gasless experience. ERC4337 is a bit more involved um, in terms of its implementation. You need to run these bundler nodes on the network which uh, gather up these transactions and um, pass them onto the blockchain. But at the same time, that, that does come at a cost where these, these transaction relay services are off-chain solutions. They're not integrated in the blockchain. You need to have some API running somewhere on some server which is listening for these incoming transactions. But that gives you some benefits because it means that you have more control over how this this transaction relay service works. So you could actually run a transaction relayer which is specific to your application so that you're only paying for the gas fees of your users. You don't have to worry about paying for the gas fees for users to use someone else's DApp because that wouldn't make any sense. So now I think it makes sense as people start building out um, DApps and trying to get new users to think about how they can onboard their users. And building in this gasless component into the DApp itself, I think, is how um, we start getting more users of blockchain technology. But really, these are just two different solutions for different use cases. It depends what you want. No one is not necessarily better than the other. It's just they're different um, and have uh, different uh, pros and cons. And both of these are compatible with universal profiles. So whether you want to um, have a transaction relay service or ERC4337 or both, uh, it's entirely up to you. So yeah, that, that's it for the talk. Um, thanks for listening. That's me again. That's the link if you want to contact me. And I'm also in person. <laughs> I'll be here uh, tomorrow, too. So um, yeah, come and say hi. And thanks for listening. Uh, how do you protect against uh, malicious users uh, that create thousands of yep. profiles and drain the relayers? Yeah, the spam. So uh, the way this is done is because the transaction relay services are like off chain, they are they are sort of necessarily centralized. You can have a lot of them, but each one is centralized and run by some entity. So. Uh, at Luxor, we will subsidize our users who come to the blockchain, and we will pay for the deployment of their universal profiles and their, um, and their transactions. But because that is not an on-chain solution, we can actually control that. So if we see that users are spamming stuff, we can shut them off. That, that's, that's the first point. The second is that that's why we came up with this notion of a, of a quota. So the idea that you have a monthly allowance of the gas, the I mean, uh, not yeah, yeah. one profile, but uh, like you know, thousands. malicious user that creates like thousands or millions. Of sure, profiles. sure. So actually, with our implementation, um, you will have to authenticate with some social media account. There's kind of like a proof of humanity step involved. Um, so there will be some barrier to entry, which means you can't have like bots just creating infinite uh, universal profiles. Um, and we'll allow like a certain number of universal profiles for each user. And um, that way, we can kind of restrict how many universal profiles users are using, and they can't just spam it with, with bots and, and things like that. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Who's next? Yeah, in the back. Hi. Um, what if user uses all the quota? Can he switch? to his own wallet and pay for, for his fees? Uh, sorry, I didn't quite catch. If the user what is if a... the user uh, depletes all his quota oh. in Relay, yeah, yeah. in it, his account, if can he easily switch 
into his own wallet or yeah. somehow top up this account? Yes, they can. Um, so if I can find it. So see here, uh, within the browser extension when you're confirming your transaction, this third option, controller key, is always available. It's just here it's grayed out because the user has no tokens, so they can't execute the transaction. So if you were using a lot of gas, you used up all of your relayers, then you would just have to top up your, your own key um, to do that. But also you could have many transaction relay services as well, so you'd have to use all of your relay services up and then and top up your key. If you if you run out of quota, but but this kind of like how much quota you get is really down to the implementation of the transaction relay service. So different like organizations might have different models for how how you get the gas. So you, it might be like an ad spend um, ad thing where you watch some adverts and then you get some gas credits and you can spend it that way, or it could be like a, a staking thing. You stake some tokens and you get whatever you. You earn you, whatever you earn on what you're staked as gas credits as well. Like there's loads of different ways this this kind of thing could be implemented. Um, it's just down to whoever whoever creates it. Thanks. Who else? Yep. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, so if I'm just uh, building some. Up with one small contract and small like uh, front end. Should I be uh, worried about my own relay, or uh, you could you could just uh, like uh, uni uh, universal talk profile could like handle all of that stuff. So user just uh, talk with uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, up uh, extension and for instance to top up directly to, to the. Uh, yeah, I, I mean it's, re it's really up to you if you want to um, implement it. it, it I mean, if you just have a small D app that you've just released for fun, it probably doesn't make sense to build your own relayer unless you're specifically interested in doing that. Um, as I say, at Luxo, we will subsidize the transactions of our users um, when they first come. So there will be transaction relay services available they can use. It, it's more for um, applications where the, app, the D app has an interest in onboarding a lot of users and getting a lot of activity on their platform. In that case, it might make sense to actually set aside some tokens and say, okay, I lose these, like, this 10 lux, which I'll spend on gas fees, but the benefit is I get to onboard a lot more users than I otherwise would have, because you run into this problem where users have to go away to the centralized exchange and do it. So it, 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 it's really up to you um, whether you see this a benefit um, for, your, for your application. Okay, thank you. Second question. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, if user uh, like uh, if user uh, don't have any like looks, uh, will it possible in future to top up with like fiat uh, on apps profiles or will it be possible to to what? To, to just top up uh, his balance with uh, oh like, no, fine, yeah. Fine, yeah. You mean like the the quota balance? Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's down to the, the relayer implementation. Um, at the moment, with our the implementation which we will give to people, there isn't currently a way to bump up your gas balance. But as I said, the idea is that this behaves exactly exactly like a mobile phone contract, where y if you run out of data, you just buy an add-on for the month. You spend like five euros and you get another four gigabyte. But here it'd be five euros and you get this much more gas, or whatever the model is. Like. It's entirely down to the service relayer implementation to make up their specific business model and any specific bespoke functionality they want to build inside that. Um, and that, that's really where like, the uniqueness of the service relayers comes in um, because that's how you know, a, a, a different service relayers will have different unique selling points that makes their thing more attractive to users. It's just down to the implementation. Uh, yeah, thank you. Sorry, it's, it's the last question. Uh, I think it's a common question to like look the team. Why did you decide to just build on like a blockchain and didn't uh, didn't do it on like ETH or something somewhere yeah. else? So the question is why is Luxo a layer one and not uh, a roll up or a <laughs> on Ethereum? Um, just quickly, the the answer is that um, the Ethereum space is very busy with different standards. Um, so, for instance, this ERC4337 and all these other different solutions to the same problems, which means you have a lot of competition about which standards are the best and which ones people should be using. Um, our motivation was that if we launch a, a blockchain with a blank slate, then we are able to 
have a blockchain where everyone is using the same tech stack and using the same standards based on the tools which we provide. Um, and that way you get more interoperability and the dApps are all agreeing on which standards they're using rather than this sort of fragmented, um, this fra fragmented ecosystem. And the second reason is also specific specifically for this transaction relay functionality is that by launching a layer one, we're able to um, actually subsidize our users, which we wouldn't have been able to do if we launched on Ethereum. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cal. Cool, thanks a lot.